Would Barnett Smith Powell and Destiny Powell please come forward? <laughs> Ronette and Destiny are <laughs> Burlington County residents who have written several children, children's books and activity books, including Corey Hates COVID, mm -hmm. Corey Beats Bullying, Corey Conquers COVID, and Corey Shares a Secret. They operate Nettie, Nana, and Friends, an entertainment company specializing in puppet shows, parties, and live performances for children. Renette is an educator in Willingboro. She grew up in Newark, so did I, and got her start in education there before relocating to Burlington County. The pair started writing books to help t teach kids about COVID, mental health, and other important topics. The puppet shows also cover African American and multicultural awareness. Renette and Destiny use their creativity and intellect to educate and empower youth. On behalf of the Burlington County Commission Award, we want to thank you so much for educating and inspiring others. So please accept this certificate on our behalf. Congratulations. <laughs> Cole and Tyrul Adukule. 
Forgive me if I did not pronounce that correctly. We also want to recognize student designers Alexander Friend, Malika Michaela Hunt, Danielle Allen, who created designs but were not able to attend this evening. So on behalf of the board, we want to congratulate you and thank you for what you're doing to educate and build awareness around black history and the culture for shining a spotlight on our college and the opportunities available to students. So I have several certificates here. <laughs> All right. So this one is for the both of you. Thank you. Okay. Lisa Steinberg, this one is for you. Cole. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Richard. Richard. Oh, okay. I know. Okay. My apologies. Am I? I know. I know. Tate. Tywool. Tywool. Okay. And the other certificates are for the folks who are not. I can bring it to that. Okay. Very good. So Alexander will receive his certificate. Michaela. And Danielle, yeah, so I will make sure you get them. Tomorrow. Outstanding, so we'll give them to you. And now, if you would like to say a few words. Oh, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> first, I'd like to thank the board of commissioners for um, thank you. 30 years, I still. Of course. <laughs> uh, and it's funny because you put Gina and Lamont on the certificate. I said, well, we've been sharing everything for 30 years. <laughs> but I wanted to thank you guys so much for um, taking the time to, to not only honor us, but to honor the students. Um, our job is easy. We, we put stuff together. We find very talented individuals like these guys, and we just put them on a platform. So um, we get way too much credit for that. It's definitely the hard work that these guys put in to make it happen. But I, I just, on, on behalf of Atlantic City Fashion Week and what we do and my staff, I just want to say thank you for recognizing us. Absolutely, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're coming? Oh, you're not coming? I never. I want to thank um, everybody. Thank you so much for this invitation. Um, as the um, head of the fashion department at Rowan College, Burlington County, we get the opportunity to collaborate. And this has been an amazing collaboration. Yes. Um, students absolutely love it, right? It's their first opportunity to experience a fashion show during this very culturally diverse um, time and it's just been absolutely wonderful for the program and we just absolutely love it and thank you so much for the honor and, and especially again also the staff. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. the staff. They're, they are the whole uh, well, I want to thank Gina and Lamont for the opportunity. Um, Lisa and the rest of the fashion department at RCBC and uh, the Yeshiva. So thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. So I want to say thank you for the organization and giving us the opportunity. And I really wanted to do it. And then when she showed up and said we could, I was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> and then I want to thank the school for allowing us to you know, be able to participate. And for this award, I, it, mean, it means a lot. So thank you so much. Thank you. We will now open the public hearing 
Would anyone like to comment on ordinance 2023-00053? Seeing none, the public hearing is now closed. Do I have a motion to adopt ordinance 2023-00053 on second reading? Sir. Thank you. Aaron, please do a roll call. Commissioner Eckel? Yes. Commissioner O'Connell? Yes. Deputy Director Pullian? Yes. Commissioner Singh? Yes. Director Hobson? Yes. Motion passes. We are now having a public hearing on Burlington. For the record, could you just officially close that public hearing? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I did it. Okay, so I will now close this public hearing on ordinance, on public hearing ordinance 2023-00053. We're now having a public hearing on Burlington County's proposed grant application to the state of New Jersey Green Acres Program to fund accessible playground improvements at Longbridge Park in Haynesport. I'm going to turn things over now to Mary Pavrabi, Director of Resource Conservation, to explain a little bit more about this grant application. Mary Thank you, Director Hobson. Can you come to the microphone? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> sorry. The New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection Green Acres Program is making grant funding available to counties to develop and improve park properties with accessible play features. Applications for the Jake's Law Accessible Playground Program must be submitted by March 1st. Burlington County intends to submit an application for these funds. This public hearing is a requirement of the application process. All grant materials discussed at tonight's hearing, including the park concept plan, cost estimate, and environmental impact assessment, are available for review and comment on the county's website. As shown on the concept plan and the idea boards that are displayed out in the hallway, Burlington County is seeking to redevelop existing playgrounds at Longbridge Park in Haynesport Township with new nature-themed inclusive play features, making the park more welcome to all. The improvements will primarily use natural materials and offer environmental educational opportunities. Some features of the new areas will include large play pieces, imaginative play elements such as birds' nests, climbing boulders, embankment slides, group swings, and accessible paths to upper and lower tier play areas. Existing pavilions will be enhanced by new plantings, accessible seating and connection to park trails, parking areas, and the restroom facility. As part of the application process, we are required to assess the environmental impacts of the proposed new playground development at the park. The assessment report dated February 3rd, 2023, concluded that the proposed playground improvements will provide additional active recreation and environmental educational opportunities to update the existing park. The report noted that no park uses, no new park uses will be developed. The proposed improvements have been designed to avoid removal of any large trees. Only some saplings and invasive trees will be removed. An area of existing maintained and irrigated turf will be reduced to make room for the expanded nature playground. Stormwater will be handled largely by using pervious playground surfacing and best management practices such as bioretention systems and rain gardens. Grading to provide accessibility will work with existing topography to preserve existing trees. A National Heritage Data Request Form to determine the presence of threatened and endangered species has been submitted, results are still pending. A review of the site using the Rutgers University flood mapper tool shows it will not be impacted by predicted sea level rise. The project area is not within a known regulated area, so it is not anticipated that any environmental permits will be required. A soil erosion and sediment control permit will be needed. All disturbed areas will be planted with native trees and vegetation. So, thank you. Thank you, Mary Pat. The public hearing is now open. Would anyone like to comment on the proposed grant application? Yes, please come forward. I'm having 63 Pirate Drive, Haynesport. 
Um, first of all, can I just say how pleased Hainsborough is that this is going to happen to our beloved Longbridge Park. It's a complete gem, we're very proud of it. Uh, we love having it in our town, and we obviously love the idea of having an inclusive playground. Um, so thank you very much for doing this. Uh, I just I did gather some comments from residents, so I'm gonna um, share them with you. Uh, one resident wanted to ask if we are replacing the existing mulch with a safer rubberized surface. I looked at the application, I couldn't see any details on that. Perhaps Mary you could. Is shaking her head yes? Yes, it is our intent to replace all the existing mulch. With the, the rubber surface? Some, some areas will have the rubber, some will just have a different type of mulch. Okay, but but a new but mulch, okay, new. awesome. Um, one resident wanted to know uh, if this, uh, is anyone concerned about the, um, the wildlife in the park? sort of uh, getting too close to this new uh, facility, like coyotes, foxes, things that could be of danger to the children. It, it is an existing park, and we have not had any, any such problems. So I, I didn't is, think so, but you know, that was what was asked. So it is a park, I and mean, obviously wildlife do exist in the park. And then the third resident, final comment, um, wanted to know about pesticide use in the park and whether we use safe pesticides because obviously the children are going to be in the area. Yes, we do try to use all safe pesticides. In fact, we have gone over to mostly organic treatments to um, eliminate the use of a lot of pesticides and herbicides. Perfect. And once again, thank you so much. We really love having this park in Hainesville. Thank you. Do we have anyone else for public comment on the proposed grant application? Seeing none, I will close this portion of public comment for the proposed grant application. We will now move on to public comment on agenda items only. Anyone who wishes to speak <laughs> on other topics will have a chance to do so later in the meeting. In addition to return to speak, please state your full name and address for the record. As a reminder, each speaker is limited to four minutes and may only speak once per public comment portion. All right, so I have a, a list here. So our first person to speak is Luis Lopez. What is your question to all the agenda items? Yes. First, I want to say thank you, Director, for our presentation. Uh, I just want to say that. Uh, your name and oh, your Louis, name Louis Lopez, 98 Level Drive, Mahali, New Jersey. I want to say thank you again for presenting the, the award. And I also want to thank to uh, Daniel for for attending in you know, the library. And I just want to say thank you for to clarify. First the question is the builders. Wanna know as honest to ask Aaron or Ashley. Can you know my could build this uh, section thirteen on my phone? Could you clarify this for me? It will probably take a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds. The current the uh, no, for the last meeting, I read, you know, I open request it and I read the whole thing. It took me two days. Uh, uh probably in the second section of the meeting, I wanna know if you uh, I expand. Do you, do you have a comment on this public? Agenda? Oh yes. Yeah. And then your other questions are not related to the general. Okay. Uh, my center item is uh J five. 12 and 19, that's all, all three of them dining. J5 is just us adding an attorney to our qualified pool list, just as it states here. J12, you said? Yeah. Yeah, just as it states, we're just, we're just authorizing um, the uh, Department of Human Services to grant funds to the state of New Jersey for Human Services Division. So I'm not, you just need the clarity on what yeah. we're doing there. Yeah. So yeah, it's, just, it's just authorization to accept services for the homeless grant funds from the state of New Jersey. And for J19, Deputy Director will respond. Yes, um, during the 1920 <clears throat> road program, we appropriated X number of funds to, to see that program throughout the county. Overlay is instead of milling 
and going down through the base. It's a simple overlay of the road to get extended light. And what we found out was we did not expend all the money we appropriated, and that figure, 1,452,828.19, is what it ended up being. There was a reduction. So we didn't use all the funds. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. I'll wait for the next section. Thank you. Next we have Ms. Anna Evans. No, I just wanted to speak about the talk, so. Oh, okay, very good. Um, next we have Fern on the left. Fern Allette, 212 Frank Opus Avenue, Delango. Uh, question pertaining to uh, J6, uh, the Memorandum of Understanding and Collective Negotiations Agreement. Uh, goes back to January 1st, 2021. So uh, I guess through the negotiations, that's gonna be retroactive as far as the agreements. And that's all the way through to uh, December 31st of 2025. No, it's just a. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Uh, just, I guess my question was, was that going to be retroactive to the point person that encompassed uh, that that agreement? Okay. Uh, my other question was on J twenty two, and uh, the period involved is July first, twenty twenty, to June thirtieth, twenty twenty one. accepting the funds and again this is just public comment but this is for the prosecutor's office for, for the grant okay. okay so that's accepting funds now for that time period correct yes okay uh, and then on j26 uh, it lists Agenda item, I think you've already answered this, J5. I think I was just asking for some context on that award. I'm sorry, could you say it again? It's a pool of our attorneys. We reopen the pool. And they're representing the, the prosecutor side of no, the? No, they represent the state. The state, okay. All right, thank you. Um, on I guess it's J11. I wrote down J10. My, my, uh, here. Uh, I guess my comment is I hope you vote in favor of accepting the uh, the donation. And I wanted to, um, I think it's J. Yeah, I guess it's J29, the um, My comment is there was another vendor uh, from the prior session that was approved, a completely different vendor. I'm just wondering um, if there's any context around two separate vendors for election related expenses, et cetera. Maybe I'm thinking just economy of scale going with one vendor unless one vendor's not able to provide the services or solutions, that's all. 
these different vendors for different equipment. Okay, yeah, I just double checking on that. And then, um, it's letter K, the appointments. Um, hopefully the, these folks that you're appointing are gonna be present. If they are, maybe you could introduce them to us. It'd be nice to meet them. Um, it would be helpful also if they had shared any sort of vision statement for how they want to perform in that role. And also, um, in terms of uh, you know, the kind of role that they're gonna play, perhaps you can share a little bit about what their expectations are for that role. And really what I'm getting at is, um, in my township of West Hampton, our foreign line is under tremendous pressure from development. And we're looking for any resource that might be able to help uh, mitigate some of that development. I'm just wondering if these folks on the Agriculture Development Board could be such a resource that we could consult with. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments, sir. Do we have anyone else for public comment on agenda items? Do we have anyone else for public comment on agenda items? Seeing none, I am closing this portion of public comment. We will now move on to resolutions. I would like to make a motion to approve resolutions J1 through J15 for unanimous consent. Second. Thank you. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Aye. Motion passes. Deputy Director Pullian. Thank you, Director. I'd like to move resolutions J16 through J21 to approve by unanimous consent. Thank you. Second. Second. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Commissioner Echol. Thank you, Director. I'd like to make a motion to approve resolutions J22 through J27 for unanimous consent. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Commissioner O'Connell. Thank you, Director. I'd like to move resolutions J28 and J29 by unanimous consent, please. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. We will now move on to appointments by director. I'm appointing the following members to the Burlington County Agriculture Board for one for a one year term. Effective February 13th, 2023 to February 12th, 2024. Kevin Sparkman, Dan Kennedy, Ed Cohen, Randy Rothmel, Brian Lestini, Isla Vazalo, Philip Prickett, John Kubik, Wes Johnson, Paul Shin, Sherry Dudas, Stephen Specka, and an alternate, an alternate Jeff Tober. <coughs> We will now move on to questions from the media. Do we have any questions from the media? Do we have any questions from the media? Seeing none, we will move on. We will now move on to public comment on non-agenda items. As I stated before, each speaker is limited to four minutes and may only speak one time. When it is your turn to speak, please state your full name and address for the record. On our list first, we have Mr. Lewis Lopez. Mm. Louis Lopez, 998 Lemon Drive, Mahogany, New Jersey. I want to say thank you again to Dan and Connor for viewing uh, uh, Dan and Facebook Live on West Hampton Township meeting. Approximately 60 people came. It was a very important meeting. All the resident was giving concern. I hope the resolution appointment, the last of resolution appointment you have, well, other people, I hope they can help uh, West Hampton, you know, to relieve some pressure. I would love to see that, the help. And I well, also uh, thank uh, you, Felicia Hopkins, for the first album uh, uh, for the Black History. I appreciate that. And uh, like I said, uh, if I want to see the video of the time, it should be available about 30 minutes I mean, as soon as I get home. And look and view. And, I'll, and one question I would like to ask, I don't know if I ask it. Ashley or Aaron, did anyone do look at this bill list for a second? Can you clarify? Well, 
Yeah, no, I'm just curious. I wrote the whole thing. I, mean, I can't give you legal advice, but I can look at your question after the meeting. Oh, okay. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Next on our list is Ms. Phillips. Good evening, everybody in general. My name is America Phillips. I live in 115 Tennessee Trail Branch, New Jersey. I got a question for the commissioners. I brought it to your attention in the last meeting in reference to those gas for the uh, Berlin transportation. Is anything you guys found it out? Uh, if they can do something for the, those residents who just wait for the buses in very bad weather sometime there? There is no venture, there is nothing in there. There is some of them here, because some of them, the majority, they don't. Oh, you can, we'll, we'll address my okay. documents for comments. You can continue. Okay, now I bring it up to your attention that, in that also, 530 is Route 7 East. The springtime is coming. Traffic is going to get very heavy. And the people is coming out of the state. They are the one bring up Brad Wilson, Brad Wilson in this uh, state. And for that, the least we can keep them safe. I will add up to their attention also formal circle. Formal circle is very dangerous. They have to do something about it. If somebody has went to a stray, they drove a stray, they, there is no, the only sign they have in there, a little circle in there, there is no lights. Uh, 206 Reliance Circle, they got lights there. And they even have a, a state police officer in there in daytime. I travel the road most every other day. But we don't have nothing in ours. I just hope the county get together with the state because I'm pretty sure that everybody got to work together. Townships, county, and the state. This is the only way to keep the world moving. We cannot just work alone. We need the help from in other places. Because I was traveling myself, and I noticed that. I also have an, a question for the uh, commissioners. I live in Pemberton Township since 1979. I've been traveling and walking the trail, Pemberton Trail, the train station that no longer belong to Pemberton Township because that was a swap was made. The county took it over. Is anything in mind what did you guys got for the residents in there? because everybody travel in the trail. This is the only safe trail we can go for walk and we don't have to worry about it for vehicles or anything. There is no facilities in there. There is no bathroom. Where do you think the people is going to go to the bathroom? The people coming out from another, another town. They don't live in the vicinity. They can say, I'm going to one. I know that we have Wawa next door, but there's not fair for Wawa where we can supply they can supply us for our help. We got facility that we got lane where even portable path can be put there for the people. I will appreciate that. And uh, my next question is, I know that every single one of you guys, when you were running, I know that plenty of people come in here and complain. Did you guys go and see the problem where these people have? or you just continue to listen to us here. I want to know you made the trips and see the problems. Say, for example, formal circle, uh, formal circle, Royal Lion Circle, uh, 520 East and uh, Route 70. Spring Lake, I know they went to hear that. Were two deaths in 20 days. I just hope I know I'm done. And thank you, and I will see you in two weeks, and I just hope that somebody can give me an answer tonight. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Have anyone else for public comment? Yes, please. Uh, I didn't sign in, sorry. Uh, Air Repair 138, Winston and West Hampton. 
Uh, just a couple of things that I thought maybe I would uh, share with you. Um, my guess is you're probably familiar with the newspaper, The Financial Times. There was an article that I saw, uh, it was an op-ed on the 12th of February, and I have it here, I'll give it to the clerk. Uh, but basically, it was talking about, quote, tech layoffs are a golden opportunity for the public sector, right? So we know there's a lot of disruption going on in the labor market, but just briefly, quote, Silicon Valley shine has worn off, and that's good news for the public sector if it's able to seize the opportunity. I'll let you read the, uh, the op-ed here, but I think that perhaps this could be something that could be uh, uh, applicable here in the States. No, it's from a European sort of viewpoint, uh, so I just wanted to mention that. And then also, there was something in the journal, Wall Street Journal, on the 14th of February. Uh, you probably have seen this uh, reporting on the opioid fund recipients. Um, so some of this money is now starting to flow, apparently. And what caught my eye was um, billions of dollars in the settlement funds are beginning to flow. The experiences of two Ohio counties highlight a new challenge, how to spend the money. So we're talking roughly, according to this article, $50 billion over two decades. But those two counties in Ohio got a head start and they're getting the money now. I'm just wondering, I'm assuming we're part of that settlement, where we are with that, when that money's gonna be flowing, perhaps you can move us up if necessary. But apparently they've come up with, Summit County, Cuyahoga County have come up with a template. And so uh, maybe it might be worthwhile to kind of see what those counties have done, faster, more efficient to just beg, borrow, or steal what they have done, and just use it as a template for here. So just something for you to think about, thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you all for coming. Um, congratulations to all the honorees um, that were honored earlier. Um, and also, congratulations and thanks to all the appointees um, that are going to continue the work on the uh, County Agriculture Board. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner O'Connell. Thank you, Director. Uh, good evening, everybody, and thanks for everyone for taking the time to come out and see us tonight. Uh, I, too, would like to add my uh, congratulations to those we honored tonight for Black History Month. And just to add a couple of more events that were held, on February 15th here in Mount Holly at the Lyceum, there was a uh, Spirit of Freedom lecture uh, by Eric. I forget Eric's last name, I know. Orange. Thank you very much from our Parks Department. Concerning the 10th anniversary of the enactment of the Emancipation Proclamation, when somewhere between five and 10,000 people came to Mount Holly uh, to celebrate this. Eric had a, uh, a reprint of a newspaper article from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Pennsylvania Railroad actually ran extra trains to bring people into the area. Um, having lived in the county for as long as I had, I'd never heard that story. Uh, it's just a shame that it had to be held on a weekday at 10 o'clock in the morning because the only kind of people that can attend are people like me that are retired. Uh, on the 18th of uh, February, the Burlington County Underground Railroad Museum held an event in Smithville Mansion. And with this passing of Ms. Louise Calloway, who actually founded the museum, there was a brief ceremony honoring her life. Uh, there's going to be a celebration of her life scheduled for March in Burlington City, where she actually started uh, the museum. And then last night, I want to thank Governor Murphy uh, for inviting our commissioner board uh, to a black history uh, celebration at the governor's mansion from Thwacket in uh, Princeton. He presented awards to several individuals, including Dr. Sam Still, the great grandnephew of Dr. James Still, uh, the black doctor of the Pines. The event was very well attended. And as we all know, black history is American history. I was happy to attend these events. And if you see more, I would recommend you, uh, you go. It's a great way to find out a little bit more history uh, about our county. And then this Saturday, uh, we have our monthly food distribution event in West Hampton uh, from 10 to 12 uh, in the parking lot behind uh, Burlington County Institute of Technology. Everybody get home safe, and thank you, Director. Thank you. Commissioner Eckel. Thank you, Director. Um, yes, once again, thank you all for coming out and being a part of the process and uh, sharing your feedback with us. We do appreciate it. 
thank you all to our uh, thank you to our department heads and the professionals who work for the county. We, we really do appreciate everything that you do for us. Um, my appreciation also to those we honored this evening for sharing their gifts and talents with all of us. We are all better for them. And also a reminder that Burlington County Winter Restaurant Week, I believe, starts March 5th. So um, be sure to, uh, to make a plan to visit the many restaurants in the county that will be participating in Restaurant Week and go out and show some love for our small businesses. Thank you very much. Deputy Director. Thank you, Director. Uh, echo uh, the comments from the previous uh, commissioners. Congratulations to all those recognized this evening. Uh, and those appointed, thanks to everyone for your comments this evening. Uh, sometimes it might not seem as if we care, we don't listen, but that is not the case. And um, uh, hopefully the people that do make the comments, there's a little bit of a process. Um, I would ask you to make sure that you contact our commissioner office um, to get the answers that you're looking for if you're not requesting a commissioner to directly respond to you, okay? And of course, anytime anybody wishes to engage me, they simply need to send me an email. Um, once again, thank you so much to our department heads and directors. I've said it, I know I sound like a bully parrot, but you guys keep everything running for us and making us look good. And I, for one, and I know the commissioner board appreciates it. Uh, safe travels home and thanks for coming. I would like to thank everyone for attending. Um, I will now uh, entertain a motion to adjourn our meeting. So moved.